The following podcast is a Dear Media production. Does anyone actually know what's going on here? I literally have no idea. Help. <laughs> We're, We're 20 whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Media IRL is back, and we're showing up bigger, better, and louder than ever. Join us on May 4th in Austin, Texas, for the ultimate live podcasting experience. Watch and learn from your favorite Dear Media hosts as they bring their insightful discussions from your headphones to the stage. Get ready to be inspired, entertained, and watch audio get a makeover. Tickets are on sale now at dearmedia.com slash IRL. See you on May 4th in Austin. In Texas. Hi. Hey. Hello. And welcome back to 20 Whatever. You got me, Ryan, and P on the couch today. We got Jessica over there. Just missing our great, great friend, Sierra. But today, today, we're going to be talking about chasing our dreams, Ugh. catching up, something near and dear to our hearts. We're in the thick of it. Into, Into the, the thick of it. it. No, hey. no, no. It's too Into soon. It's too soon. It. <laughs> to be hey. fun. Into, let, let them know. This is the energy you're going to get. Okay. That's true. And also, the backyard again has taught us so much. Oh, shaped me yeah. even though we were definitely like older when the backyard again i definitely think i was too old to be watching the backyard again when i was for sure but you know some little kid shows hit and that's just the truth that and blues clues Dude. never never aged you know like handy manny sorry <gasps> oh i did like handy i loved mm-hmm. handy manny please this is not over to- <laughs> wait 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 wait. i have one more thing to add before we leave this oh, please stop. speaking of handy manny they're now doing like a relaunch of bob the builder and actually oh our God. boy anthony yes. ramos who oh. it was uh the guy usnavi in in the heights he's yes. also in transformers and in hamilton on Broadway and Hamilton on Broadway yes. as most of you know him from yes. um, Mr. Ramos is going to be redoing the role of Bob, Bob the, Builder, the Builder which I saw in the comments they're like why isn't it Handy Manny because he's Latino so we were right. like right which but also T so so there is T the T the T <laughs> no that's good T and I did see that too because obviously I follow him on Instagram because and I love to see that they're bringing back Bob the Builder again my yeah like, that was super trendy I feel like with my little brother when we were growing up mm, yeah, yeah, yeah all the pillowcases all the sheets were yes. Bob the Builder and plates too you know dude well that was like a that was like a fun thing to say when someone asks you to do something and you're like do I look like Bob the Builder like remember that <laughs> yeah but then you hit it with a he can fix it right it's like yeah. I can I can fix it that was and just- you're like no I can't <laughs> I can't fix it. Me trying to build Ikea furniture. (laughs) Actually, can you guys go into an Ikea together? I feel like that's a relationship test in romantic relationships. Have we gone? I don't think we've actually been to an Ikea together. Really? Well, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm like, wait. Every time we've always like texted each other about it. That we were in an Ikea? Yeah. And it's, that's actually interesting because we have lived together. How did we never take a trip to Ikea together? Yeah, that's interesting. I guess we haven't. Yeah. No. No, we, no, we actually, no, we haven't because you just realized that there was food at Ikea. uh, Yes. And I was like, yeah, there's food at Ikea. I am so late to like the party, which by the way, if you didn't know and you were like me, Ikea has fantastic, delicious food. I yeah. could highly recommend the uh, little meatballs, the meatballs. Oh, yeah, with the, the meatballs sauce go. and the mashed the potatoes. Gravy and the ta- cr- cranberry sauce. So <gasps> the cranberry good. sauce. Uh, girl. Yeah, it yeah, tasted yeah. like Thanksgiving. It's it's really good. I, and if you have like a membership, which like you don't have to pay for it. Like it's like free. But if you have like if you sign up or whatever and you like have a card, you can get one dollar coffee every time you go. It's a dollar. I am yeah. so late to the cafeteria slash <laughs> food situation that's know, happening like the IKEA. Food they also have, I mean, the churros are really good. They have like ice cream cones. They got Slurpees. They, like again, they have like a whole restaurant section, like how Costco has set up, which smart. Yes, you know, yes. like you really guys were doing. And, and but except there's no membership thing like Costco. Like you just walk into an IKEA. So I'm sad that I'm late, but happy I'm here. Yeah. In the comments, if you have <laughs> any more, I've heard a little bit about like Sam's Club having some yes. stuff. If you know stuff, we don't. Tell I us. feel like Sam's Club is East Coast. Oh my gosh. Right? No, Sam's Club used to be here. Mm-hmm. I remember. Really? I, yes. One of my first baby dolls that I ever had was from uh, was from Sam's Club. I remember it had even like a little onesie oh. on that like had like. Not Sam's Sam, Club logo? Yeah, like a Sam's Club <laughs> logo. That's how I can remember so much having this Sam's Club. This is a Sam's Club baby. <laughs> yeah. It was like baby shoe shoe or something. It was just like so. I can just Not remember shoo-shoo. it so vividly. And I'm like, this is. It's not a Costco baby, which, by the way, but, well, now we are yeah. near and dear to Kirkland. We love oh, oh, Costco. Oh. <laughs> Kirkland vodka? Uh, the it, best. The best. It might as well be Grey Goose. It is. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. It's just, it's just, it's a different I label. I'm so excited to tell you about it. You 
You knew. We it knew. is. But you know what? And and that's all to say that the labels don't matter. All of your favorite makeup and all of your whatever the fuck, it's Target brand. It's all the same. It just has this game's label on it. And what I do they to call it, it white labeling? Where it's like it all comes from a similar factory. White washing. And then they play- <laughs> <laughs> all right, settle down. No, no, that's yeah. not what we're talking that's about not today. this episode. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that is yeah, so real right, where though. like it all comes from the same factory, but they yeah. just slap it with a different like Gucci logo and you're like, I will spend thousands of dollars instead. Right. But I mean, that is what it was. We found out that the Grey Goose is quite literally the same stuff that they put in Kirkland vodka. So, you know, yeah. if you've been to Costco, it's a large, large, clear vodka bottle. Yeah, that, huge. in fact, is Grey Goose, you guys. I re- Like at a fraction of the price. Yeah. Like saw the documentary, the whole thing. Like uh-huh. they just changed the label. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I hope you learned something today. Um, subscribe, but <laughs> <laughs> don't trust labels. Yeah. Don't go to Costco and go to IKEA. <laughs> Get yourself a meatball. <laughs> um, what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about our dreams and uh, chasing your dreams. And yes. I mean, this is something that you and I talk about all often, the time. I mean, all we're all the time. We are actually in the thick of it. Like we are literally in it right now. So yeah. it's. It's very topical Mm -hmm. and very real for us. And I think we have a lot of these conversations, not even like intentionally, like we're just like, oh, hey, girl, how's this, this, this? And you're like, dude, I filmed this. I was trying to do this and I'm tired and whatever. We wanted to talk about this because not only is it very real and like present for us right now, but like I feel like a lot of people in their 20s especially like in our late, we're in our late twenties. And so it feels like we should definitely not be chasing dreams at this point. We should be like living our dreams. Mm -hmm. And that narrative can be sometimes like really uh, discouraging. And you should, you know, because when we're young, we're like, okay, when we're 30, like 30, girl, 30. Right, right, right. We should have our shit together. But like, I'm not even close. And I'm like way closer to 30 than I am to getting to my dreams. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and as you mentioned that, it's making me think, like, as you're growing up, it's obviously, quote, unquote, normal to be like, so what do you want to be when you grow up? Like, what are your dreams? What yeah, are you going to do? Gonna, do? Yeah, like, what dreams are you going to chase? And then when you start reaching, like, your late 20s, you're like, well, maybe maybe some thoughts come up where you're like, maybe I'm a little bit too old to be chasing that dream. Or that, Yes, yes, because I feel like you can feel like you age out of dreams mm-hmm, mm-hmm. where that's like. Okay, girl. Oh, you want to be an actress? Well, maybe hang that up, sweets. You didn't. You didn't right, make it. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. When you were in your early twenties, how? What did? What age did you think being old was? Like, what in, did you consider the youngest old? Let's let's and and who let's was answer the youngest old. Yeah, and let's answer that question from when we were twenty. Like, because I think that okay. that's like you had just freshly. We just hit the scene. You are freshly twenty. Right. I'm. I'm 20. I'm 20. You're, what do yeah, I yeah, think yeah. being your 20s is like? I'll tell that's what, and and that that little sound of I I'm 20. Yeah. <gasps> really rings true because when you turn 20 you don't really feel like you're in your 20s I feel yeah you're still kind of like a teen you're fresh right out and I'm trying to think Mm, so I guess to me old when I was 20 was like 20 like 25 and up Mm -hmm. really yeah mine was like 40 45 because when I was a kid (laughs) certain family members had like menopause early Mm. um earlier than normal at like 43 or 45 which was like kind of early and so I remember being like, oh, that's a milestone. Mm, right, right. Right. Absolutely. Right. I don't think I ever even thought about it on that, like, with with science of it all. Like, being like, right, oh, menopause. Right. Like, the, right. I, did, I was so young, clearly. And yeah. not the, even in my, a thought in my brain that I was like, oh, being old, I have to have it figured out by 25. Like, genuinely, by 25, I have got to have, like, the husband yeah. and the kids in the house. Like, if not, what? I'm going to be 30 and alone? I mean, I... Well, I, yeah, I, I feel like I that thought. was, yeah, 30 and alone. And I think, honestly, that was just a lot of our uh, media. Movies. A lot of, like, the rom-coms and all of that kind of, like, heavy on the, the girl with the career has no relationship and no kids and is sad because she chose work. And you know what I mm-hmm, mean? Like, mm-hmm. that narrative. And she's, like, freaking out and telling all of her friends that she's turning 30 and she's single. Mm-hmm. And so... That was like a for me, I was like, oh, okay, so 30 is like really actually old. And if you don't have a relationship and a kid in a house and all this shit, then like you're also kind of a prude. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like there was that narrative too, right? Of like, oh, you chose work and this, you're a prude. 
Oh, interesting. Uh, really? Really? Mm-hmm. I, I was thinking more the term spinster. Mm. Oh. I mean, maybe that I was too. Like, explain prude to me. Because yeah. I feel like the way that they portrayed women who were actively just like trying to do their career and they like weren't interested in dating and whatever, obviously in the movies means that they weren't like giving men attention. Mm. That was prudy. Mm. Oh, I felt like it felt even selfish rather. And like that's the narrative they were pushing on us because like, well, yeah, of how, yes. right. That, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So of like, how could your dream, because in that moment, that woman's dream was to pursue her work, pursue whatever career right. she was doing. And it's like some women's dream is to have a family. Some's dream right. is to have that career. So it's like how and w- and dreams are constantly changing, mm-hmm. ever changing. I mean, how many times have as personalities and people we yeah. are changing our cha- our dreams change with them? Yeah. So for that period of like that woman chasing her dream of trying to work and then making it to that dream and yeah. then being like, oh, my gosh, I don't have what society's telling me which is the husband the house uh-huh. the dog right. the whatever the thing and oh also right. the career because that's because what do you right because oh so you're just a housewife because then it turns into that you know what i mean like then you don't have a life and then you don't actually work and then it's like it's it's like a no win-win like yeah, there's no, no, no. Ne- well you, that's it, why it's a lose-lose it is right it's yeah. a lose sorry <laughs> no, i missed she both. said it's a win-win i said no 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 it's a lose-lose <laughs> i stand very corrected <laughs> it is a lose-lose yeah. is what i meant because Right, you can either like pursue your dream of wanting to like have a house and home and that's really what you're just looking forward to doing mm-hmm. or or chasing your career. And mm-hmm. also there's so many other options in between those two where yeah. it's like people try to do both at the same time. Right. right. And just as we're talking about it now, it's like, right, but there's so much to life than just like that. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Money and like health. Health. And relationships, and all, I mean, all everything. of it. Everything. Yeah, yeah, everything. So, yeah, when I was younger, I was like 25 years old. I should have it figured out by now. Present day, at almost 28, uh, I feel like old is like 70. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. old. Old means something so different to me. Yeah, I'm like... Totally. No. Oh, girl. Like, yeah. I'm like, I am so young. I have so much life to live. I have so much shit. But like... Now, but I feel like right now, though, now that I have a job, right, and I do make my own schedule and I am an adult person, I feel like I can actually now chase my dreams in a way that I wasn't able to when I was younger. Even though I was younger, Mm -hmm. I was maybe a little bit more eager. I had a little bit more free time, but I still didn't have a head, Mm -hmm. right? (laughs) didn't have a brain. So I was really just kind of like, noodle bopping all over the place Mm -hmm. now i'm still noodle bopping because i don't know how to do anything actually now currently but same (laughs) go on but i feel like i have a better focus on what i'm looking to achieve in my life Mm. i I feel that and i think a part of me feels that way is because for so long i don't think that i knew exactly what i wanted and i was just Mm kind of like doing what needed to do needed to happen because i was told that that was needed of me rather than now where i'm like i know exactly what i paloma wants and needs to feel fulfilled in this lifetime so now i know what needs to happen what are the steps it's like figure out the dream and then now start doing the steps backwards to be like that's how we're gonna get there and that's based on your dream on and not what everyone thought because sometimes you're like People also convince you that that's your dream, you know, like when you're a little person. Oh, you're so talented (laughs) at this thing. Like you should, you should do this. And oh my God, you're, you're so gifted at this thing. You should do this. And it's like, for sure. And like, of course, and we're not saying like, yeah, yes, 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 yes. And yes. And right, right. We're just like, oh my God, you're so good at conversation. And you're like, so good at this. You should be a lawyer. Imagine if I would have ran with being a lawyer for, for a long time. I was told by my family and all my cousins and uncles and aunts and my parents were always like, Paloma, you were just so good with like this and that, that maybe you should go into like lawyer, like being a lawyer. And like, we have that in the family. I'm so serious. Right. To law. They were telling me to go into law. And I, I, really- I hate to laugh, but Right? I know. You? That's a lot of conflict. I know. The most people-pleasing girl you could find. They were like, a lawyer. Because I like to run my mouth and argue. I'm like, you guys are confused. But imagine if I would have run with that dream of like chasing that or whatever. The amount of reading. (laughs) I don't know if you could. I don't know, I can't even read. So that would be so hard. It's so crazy to me. These are pictures. We're going to (laughs) look. I present the court case with photos. (laughs) It's you sending the judge emojis. (laughs) I come in with, I object. Yeah. (laughs) 
booked. Right. <laughs> and that will be the closest I will ever be to a lawyer <laughs> is playing, playing a lawyer. Playing a lawyer. Being a lawyer. Playing a lawyer. I was going to say, sometimes reading is hard and also you can read and talk in two languages. See? It's I think you forget sometimes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Not even one, honestly. Injusticia! <laughs> <laughs> That'll get him really confused. <laughs> uh, I don't think that we are qualified to give advice on how to chase your dreams. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is not an advice episode. This is us merely just explaining how we're trying to be fulfilled in life. My foot popping? Do you see that? I was just like, these are and our you dreams. Just get your dream. <laughs> Point that toe, baby. <laughs> Which, honestly, this is a perfect time to talk about this because I just had a photo shoot for my rebrand, which should definitely be out by now. So if you've seen any of my photos, please, that's probably what the tea was. Um, <laughs> but I had a photo shoot that I had to, for the first time, like book and figure out all by myself on my own dime, like all of it, hmm. which I don't got monies, okay? This mm -hmm. we, we had to be very strategic because mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to do a photo shoot, but obviously that shit costs money. Yeah, and a lot. A lot of money, and I don't also have, like, hours and hours to do a shoot, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, and so I was, like, really trying to be, like, how can I use what I have to make my vision, like, come to life? And I was like, okay, I have the vision. I know what I want visually. And I'm like, okay, I got to order this backdrop. That's like $50. Okay, we can do that. And I was like, but I want this outfit. It's like, it's giving. I have to go to the thrift store to get these outfits and look in my closet. And all of those things I was able to do. And then it got down to like, I need a photographer. Mm -hmm. And like, that's a pretty penny. Yeah. As it should be. Like, right. this shit's expensive for a reason. Right. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like, I really don't know. And honestly, I I got lucky because this photographer was looking for subjects to shoot for her own portfolio. Right. So right. she was like, I need subjects. And the trade-off will be you get photos. You get photos and I get photos. Yeah. And I was like, oh, such a win-win. Perfect. Now that's a win-win, lady. that's a win-win. The photographer gets experience to shoot you. Yep. You a now have the and photos. Now I have photos. Amazing. And we were, yeah, so I, so I got connected with her through somebody else, which also your connections are your everything. Yes. When chasing your dreams and trying to like get to where you want to be. And if you don't have any money, you better, you better be nice to people and talk because that's how you get in rooms. Mm -hmm. And so someone else mentioned me to this photographer and we started talking and I was like look I will do what needs to be done I will help you I'm like I have I have a budget of a hundred dollars okay mm -hmm. okay what can we do with that and mm -hmm. so we really like talked it through on like what I could do to make my vision come true what she needed as far as like the actual trade of the shoot mm -hmm. And that, I mean, that was my biggest expense. Mm -hmm. And then I also was like, well, we need, I have to book a studio. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, how am I going to do this? And my other friend also booked the same photographer. And so we ended up chatting and being like, hey, we can split the studio. Mm. Like, let's use the same studio, but you can have the front half, I'll have the back half, whatever. And then we can just split that. Yeah. Really making it work. Really making it work. Mm -hmm. Because... Of course, we could have shot outside and we could have done a whole bunch of things. Also, this was when it was raining every single day in L.A. So rip. <laughs> and when it's raining in L.A., you it's simply. It's flooding. You don't go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just can't. You just can't do anything. We're melting. So <laughs> thank God we, you know, we had to get a studio. And so I was able to still get what I felt like I needed, mm -hmm. but with what I had. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I feel, I think the other thing about chasing your dreams and like really wanting having a vision obviously your dreams like there's no budget on what your brain can come up with <laughs> do i know that yeah wish it did <laughs> wish it did me and like um that costs thousands of dollars my brain's like well that's what i need so I, <laughs> my brain's like okay so we fly to tahiti <laughs> <laughs> literally Bro. we're on the water there's bungalows yeah. we have an opportunity to where we're Jet all skis. having breakfast <laughs> there's they're on floating trays we're all eating on the floating trays yeah. instead yeah. like no literally 
endless. Cause it's endless because there's no budget. It's just, it's literally just your mind. Yeah. And then when you have to like actualize it, you're like, oh, this is, n- this is much more difficult than I thought. And I was also like, I also need hands. I can't hire people. I don't like, uh, we've already established that like all of this shit costs money that I don't have. And so here I was like, hey girl, you know this photo shoot that I've been trying to do? Yeah, um, I'm, can you please come help me? And so I'm texting Paloma like, I don't need like that much, but I would just love to have some hands. Like I have two outfits. I I really want to vlog this, like all this stuff. And I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do it alone. Mm -hmm. And again, that's where I was leaning on my connections, leaning on my friends because no, I couldn't pay you, but uh, yeah, you love me. Mm -hmm. And so, and you knew that this was important. And so you made it work. Mm -hmm. And, Obviously, I appreciate you so much, and this was so long ago, so we've already done the things, but let me publicly, thank you so much, Paloma, for helping me, because truly, you literally saved my life. Like, I was I was struggling, and I, I needed help, but I think the thing that made it work was the fact that I was like, I know that this is what I want. How can I make it realistic for myself, and how can I use the resources that I already have? Mm. Because if I had endless amounts of money, it wouldn't be that difficult. Mm-hmm. You right. know what I mean? right. And right. that's where I'm like, chasing your dreams is hard because it's not like all you have to do is try. Yeah. That's like a small portion of it. Yeah, I have to try, but I also have to have X, Y, Z to get all to get the result. Right, right. When you were talking about it, just that right, you're like, it's just so hard. And I'm like, right. Which it's- is why people obviously like us struggle to chase their dreams because it's not just like, oh, I just have to have the want. Right. You're like, oh, I just got I just got to be eager, earnest. No, right. It's so much more than that. It takes it takes a, a village. I mean, literally, we have had the opportunity to be on so many sets, and we see how long it takes just to get one photo. You need right. to have the makeup. You need to have the the hair. The you lighting. need to have the lighting. Yep. The person doing the lighting, doing the photography, doing the air, blowing you while yeah, you are yeah. literally posing. Like, in right. the person that picked out the costume. Like, it yeah. is so many people. You're on set shooting that one thing, and you, you're staring at like 15 people because those right. people and those people are working to help make that one vision come true Mm -hmm. and so without that support you can't do it so you asking me like can you come and be on the set it's like a no freaking brainer especially like as a creative you just know how valuable that is like that Mm -hmm. support the hands and yeah It is so valuable having those extra hands. I mean, while I was there on set with you, I myself was like, oh my gosh, I'm literally necessary. Like I need to be like helping stuff. Like when the photographer was like, can someone pull the curtain a little bit because the shade's doing this. Like you just need extra hands. You don't know for what. And if it's like, can you just grab this? It's so nice to have that support there. And like, because of that, luckily we were able to get so much more shots and like really take advantage of the space that you had gotten and everything. Yeah, And it was... It and made so much of the difference. It made so much of the difference. Every hand and person that was there was necessary. Yeah. And there because they love you and support you and they understand how important it is that it it takes so many people to get to that dream. And it was so fueling for me just to be there on that set with you because it's inspiring to see like, mm. I know how hard it is to make shoots or like any sort of creative thing or any... Right. Any creative endeavor. <laughs> and it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's so tough. And so it was super inspiring. And I was like, and being surrounded by like-minded people, right. it's just so valuable, which I do want to add that. If you're like, I, I want to chase this dream, start kind of in like the community because just talking to those people. Dude, get to networking. Gets you networking, inspired, and you're like, oh my gosh, like maybe I can do this. Maybe I can, if I can get enough people together, mm-hmm. we can do something like that. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that kind of thinking is something that like has recently happened for me and clicked with me because for so long I was like, I just want to be in musicals and just chasing that dream, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't really happening. And so I'm like, okay, so do I have to just give up or can I try try to find like another avenue of doing that? Right. So that's kind of where I'm at right now where I'm kind of like still trying to find where I can get my fix of my creativeness rather than just mm-hmm. like being in musicals. Right. And actually, Ryan slept over at my house the day after her photo shoot. Yeah. And I was like, hey, can you just like help me out and with, with one of these like little uh, musical numbers that I wanted to do? And I having Ryan help me out and like come over and like just be a part of like my little dream was 
just so fulfilling and made me realize that I don't need like the full stage to like get my dream. Like you can do other things Mm -hmm. yourself and make them yourself in your way. And so it's just kind of shown me like, oh, wow, like there's only not one way to your dreams. Like you can maybe find a different avenue or do different stuff. And that's where I'm at right now. And it's like like it's on your way to chasing the dream that you are looking at you might find that like it doesn't have to only be that yeah I mean I thought that I could only get that feeling of like (gasps) like passion and like love of excitement for this craft only on stage but I found now that I mean Ryan and I got together and the day after we shot the little mini musical of number of without love from the musical hairspray of course and obviously of course (laughs) uh, that's actually the musical where we met Yes. Fun fact. Yeah. I, I think yeah, I didn't. Fun fa- I don't even think we said we, that. We didn't. Re- we didn't realize that until we got that day to shooting, and we were like, "Oh my god, not us doing hairspray." That's the musical where we met. Yep, where it all started. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what would we do <laughs> like without that? Yeah, so literally. seeing that I can do a little mini musical in my living room and do a little bit of costume and a little bit of makeup and stuff like that, that there can it can curve that craving of like theater or things like that, and mm-hmm. honestly showing me that hey, maybe my my dream's different. Like, maybe I want to do something else. Like, you don't know what the end of the path leads if you don't start a path. And I feel like Mm, I was just so, I don't know where to do or where to go, so I just won't do. And I was just stalled. And I was just stopped. And just kind of being like, there's a road blockage. I'm just going to sit here. There's nothing I can do. But... That really isn't it. Like you could you can reverse the car reverse, and go, go off road and you can go under it, yeah, you can go over it. Totally. It's not the same, but may, maybe you get on that path and you're like, I don't, I can't even believe I'm on this path. And it's actually leading me somewhere else that I don't even know where. And I'm having so much more of a good time. Yeah. So yeah. it's really interesting. Yeah. I feel like the, I also think it's a uh, creative endeavors are different. I feel like than chasing maybe a more, traditional dream i think burnout is a lot different because you are relying on your brain to create the content whether that's in person or online it doesn't matter i'm just using the word content for the sake of the conversation Mm -hmm. but your brain has to come up with the content Mm -hmm. there's no book there's no right or wrong it's brain today what are we doing and then you just have to try to execute whatever it is that you think Mm mm-hmm and if you if your brain isn't doing that, a part of you is like, well, I can't get this and this and this and this. And, or you try to overcompensate for the fact that your brain's not thinking mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. or what you want it to think. Mm-hmm. And it can lead to so much burnout, especially if you're doing everything yourself. Question mm. on that, mentioning burnout. Do you feel like when you're pursuing, because there's, like you said, more traditional jobs, and not that those can't be passion no, or course. fulfilling, of but course. they are different. And as somebody who like went after their dream and it burned me out to the point where I was like not functioning, and I found something, you know, in between that mm. kept me fueled but did not deplete me dry. Mm-hmm. Right. Do you feel like it's hard following your passion because you bring it everywhere you go you don't really get a break especially when you're monetizing it or trying to or trying to spend if not you know making money your time on it Mm -hmm. yeah uh absolutely us our our friendship honestly yeah like i mean yeah we see that with our friendship where we're just kind of like oh like we're we obviously we no longer live together so we want to spend our best friend time together but then when we do get together we're like we like, need oh, we to should shoot this we should take pictures let's make sure we get this 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 and this and this and that right and it's like for sure but also we could just hang out mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but then when we do that we're like why <gasps> didn't we shoot we should have shot that because that would have been great oh yeah. we could have gotten that and yeah it's you, you're kind of fighting with yourself of like, what's for me? What's for monetization? And it's having to understand that not everything has to be monetized and right. knowing that some things have to be for ourselves. Right. Because right. Cause you're like, oh, I could monetize it. That could be good for me. Right. But is that what you need? Or do you actually need this time for yourself and right. privacy or whatever right. it is? And right. that is actually what you need. Right. I mm-hmm. mean, and I think the other thing too, the reality of where we're at in our online careers is that 
pretty much nothing is monetized anyway. Right. Like, we're doing all of this just so that we can build a community, build a following, do the thing so that we then can get monetized. Right. That's the other thing, too. It's like, we are doing this, and it's like, and it's fun, and it's great. Are we dying a little inside? Yes. <laughs> we're tired. We also have jobs that we that pay us to right. work. Right. Right. That are also creative jobs. Right. So. I think the like there's just so much and like we're like yes we have to post on YouTube and all this stuff because we need to be able to have content. Are we getting paid for the content? No, but hopefully one day <laughs> one we day. will. Yeah, that's the goal. You know, our goal. But yeah. also I can't spend all of my creative brain on my projects because I have to work mm -hmm. that requires me to use my creative brain so that I can pay my bills so I can live my life. Right. And that's a choice I made to to work in a creative life and also pursue creativity. So whatever it's fine, it's a choice I made. But that's the reality of it mm -hmm. is that my creativity is getting spread all over. Right, 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 right. Absolutely. You know, I don't get to streamline it at the end of my corporate job or whatever to then pursue my things. Mm hmm. And not to, and 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 whatever, and that's a hard. That's hard too. I can't imagine. I don't want to work corporate life, so I'm not interested in finding out. But I'm sure it's hard. I'm sure it's impossible. <laughs> It's such a mind shift because for so long, you're also like, well, like we literally are now where we're like, obviously, I have to keep the budget for low for my extracurricular mm -hmm. activities down because I have to pay rent. I have bills to pay. Right. right. And it's like, um, should I be spending that much on my dream? Like, does that right. seem silly? Like, right. I have that thoughts sometimes. Right. All where, the time. Where I'm like, oh, my gosh, like I want to buy this rope so she can tie me up for this little musical video. And I'm like, but I'm not making any money off of this video. And it's right. like, right. But it's like that will creatively fuel me. And that will be right. some. And, and hopefully. Hopefully. It's the hope. Yeah. And hopefully this will be pay off like pay off mm -hmm. like it it paid off emotionally because we had fun and we did a thing and it was great and like yeah. i'm so glad we did it yeah but also hopefully yeah it will do what it needs to do so that we can do this forever for a work i know you know what i mean I, well i mean that i guess that is the that's the goal to do the dream as work you right, know right that's right. absolutely yeah because i also feel like there's it's hard to because you think about it right you're like should i be maybe that's what it is me in the middle of a sentence thinking of something else to say when you're a kid not even when you're a kid when you were a young adult and you are figuring out what you really love and what you want to pursue you have more time to probably pursue that thing and not have the thought of like well i shouldn't do that because i have to pay this bill mm. oh i shouldn't spend my time doing that or i shouldn't pay, spend this money because i got to do this thing and 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 i think that the older you get the easier it is to give up on your dreams because quote unquote uh -huh. reality mm -hmm. is that xyz bill needs to get Still paid mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. as much as i want to sing and dance around my living room i don't have the i don't have the luxury to do that correct yeah. i have to feed my family or do whatever 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 right right and you guys did um we'll link it below a like day in the life with me episode where you talked a lot about you know almost every hour of your day and something that was a, a big theme for both of you was i think p said it well you clock out from your nine to five and you clock into your five to nine and it's right. not only the things you need to you know make your household run to make your life run to feel yourself it was it was almost like you were working three jobs yeah 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 Literally, you saying that, it's like, how could you even have time to think about, oh, what do I even want to, like, what what am I dreaming about? Like, what's my dream? Right. You're like, babe, to just make it through the end of the week. Right. And sometimes that is the dream. You're like, no, I literally. just need to get through this crazy ass work week or whatever it yeah. may be. It's just easy to be like, well, maybe I'm not going to use the word easy. It's, it feels more practical to let that kind of shit go yeah and be like oh when i was young you know or not yeah. even when i was young because like sure we're young of course but like it's way easier for me to be like well when i was 21 and living at home yeah i could be fucking around all day long like you are so no you're literally right because saying like oh when i was young me 28 years old i swear i think two years ago or may it was maybe during the pandemic and maybe it was because i was in the middle of a pandemic that i had these thoughts probably but it was really <laughs> the thought of oh boy, I think it's too late for me to quote unquote, like have like be successful in these dreams because right. Paloma, now you are about to be 30 and mm -hmm. you're not even close to like being in any show mm -hmm. or anything of what you're talking about. And you're like, 
all right, well, I guess I missed my time. It's time to be serious now. Like I, yeah, I gotta, serious. I gotta really buckle down and just like only make money and mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Because now we have to live. Right. Yeah. And it would be foolish of me to be like, I have dreams or other dreams than yeah. outside of like my job. And especially uh, a dream that doesn't pay well anyway. Oh, gosh. it's not like you dream of being a doctor. I know. You dream of dancing. I good luck to you. I literally <laughs> wish I wanted to be in like tech or something Dude, like that. Yeah. Why couldn't I be crazy about coding? I don't know. It's unfortunate. <laughs> it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> if we've learned anything, it's not too late. <laughs> which, speaking of which, it's not too late. The girl that just recently said it's not too late and kind of like made me realize, mm. like you gotta keep chasing your dreams for like a long time is miss miley cyrus dude she recently won her first grammy miley cyrus has recently just won her first grammy that to me blows my mind i'm like you've worked so hard your whole life like i've seen the work and effort and content and Mm -hmm. iconic moments you've given us and Mm -hmm. we're just now barely celebrating that you have made it this dream that she's been wanting, which she also said I gave up on too. She was like, oh, I thought yeah. that's never going to happen to me. Right, right. If Miley Cyrus is saying that, then I'm like, girl. Right. No, I think, uh, honestly, the Grammys were a lot of things that we're not going to talk about. But one thing we are going to talk about, uh, as well as Miley Cyrus, is Victoria Monet. She's been in the industry for years and years and 15, years. I think she said. I think she said 15 and has written bop after bop after bop. And people literally wanted to be like, who even is this? I said, every song you know by Ariana Grande has been written, written by, by Victoria her. Monet. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And she is just now getting her flowers and she has been popping that puss for years. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she didn't give up and now she's a solo, now she's doing her own solo thing. Yeah. And like, thank God she didn't give up because now we got... Now we got, like, her own hits. I know. Then it's, like, incredible to see. I know. And imagine if she would have stopped. Right. I know. And that's what... <laughs> that's what keeps us going. That's what keeps us delusional. He, he, <laughs> truly, the Grammys for me really was really inspiring. I was like, see, Paloma, like, every small, like, step that you make and effort you are is still... It's the act of still chasing it. And that mm-hmm. is so important like the fact that you just even still have that spark and willingness to try to do whatever you're still setting out to do that period oh my god so when you are doing the thing you feel like you're called to do in your life Mm -hmm. whether it's for money passion regardless how does that make you feel i think it's the best shit ever i think i realize what i will do for free (laughs) i will perform and do musical theater for free forever yeah like that sleepover that shit yeah dude i would do that every night Mm -hmm. like there and here's the thing i think the tricky part is that we do try to monetize the things that we love because money is necessary Mm -hmm. and so yes we're trying to have a good time and we want to have fun so we're like if we can do the fun thing and also get paid to do the fun thing that's the dream right so dream job no i don't dream of labor i literally do not want to work. I hate it. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't think anybody wants to. Like, if we had a choice, y'all, no, no, we, we would wouldn't. just frolic, right? We okay. would frolic in the flowers and the leaves and have sex and that's it. Like, right. that's literally what we would be doing. Right. Eating the Eating the fruits and whatever. Yeah. No one loves working. Some people do. That's fine. I hate it. I literally hate working. I'm not. I just, uh, please, please, please. <laughs> so, in my mind, I'm like, it does make sense for me to try to... M- make money off of the things I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. But I know that if I never get paid to do a show, I'm still going to do the show. Mm, I'll pay to do the show. I will pay to do it. I know. Fiscally, I shouldn't be paying to do that, but I will. That's why I think for so long, I was like, I cannot like take what I want to do and just like put it on the internet because I was like, you're not going to want this. Like, I I feel like I need to pay to to, to be right. a part of this. Like, I'm right. not going to film Ryan and I what we normally would do, which is in our singing in my living room. Like, no right. way. Right. I mean, well, that kind of does make you feel like it like like Jessica said, like, that's the part that lights me up and makes me feel passionate. And mm-hmm. I don't need to be paid to do that. Right. So I guess that that is like my uh, what, what's the word like your my hobby. And so, yeah. Yeah. That's why people don't have times for like their hobbies and and like No, because if you can monetize and make money, then it's like no longer, it's no longer a, hobby. a hobby. Yeah. You could still enjoy it. Yeah. Like that doesn't take away it, it doesn't have to take away the joy of doing the thing. Mhm. But 
if that's how you make your money, that's your job. Yeah, right, right. Right now, it's it's a hobby that we hope to be a job because it doesn't make any money. Mm -hmm. So it is just a hobby. I see that. Thoughts. Prayers. Ugh, condolences. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like not only is it time, money, and like the desire that gets in the way, it's the rejection of it all. Because personally, I don't know how many times... I've been told no or like, no, you're not this enough. You're not that enough for this role. And I just kind of was like, maybe I should start listening to them. Like, maybe I'm not, you know, and that's when you start when it's like the constant rejection that you're just like, oh, my gosh, not only is it super impossible to chase my dreams, but now I'm having other people tell me that maybe I'm not meant for it. And you're like, oh, my gosh, you're right. What am I doing? It's silly of me to chase this dream. It's just a dream. I need to stick with what's real and what's here. And yep. so, yeah, I mean, I mean, and flip that and put that shit on the Internet. We've seen we've seen and that's fine. And like, love to y'all. But imagine if we really cared. Yeah. And we took what they said and really was like, I should not be making YouTube videos. I should not be singing. I should not be doing X, Y, Z, Z, Z and Z. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I think I did believe for a little bit, like, I shouldn't, and which is why I stopped. I, like... I believe you. <laughs> it, it, like, it, like, got to me, you know, where yeah. you're just, like, after so long of, like, um, sorry, your teeth are too big. You're not Mexican enough. You're not this. You're just, like, sure. every, every time you go to try, you're, like, ah, yep. well, maybe I... Maybe I'm not cut out for this. Right. But... I think that that's also the special thing about dreams, that you always find yourself back to them and you're always like, but why is this on my heart? Why is this always, why am I always thinking about it? And why would I do this for free? Why would I, why if I had only one day left and they were like, how would you spend it? You would spend it doing whatever that is, you know? Right, totally. Um, That you have to just kind of look into yourself and be like, because I want this, this is my dream. And if I'm going to be here in this lifetime, I should spend it at least trying Correct. And so I think that's where I'm at. Just like trying, like, I don't really care anymore. If it, if anyone's like, that's not for you, I'm going to be like, it's actually not for you. This is for me. Right. Actually, actually, this isn't for you. Yeah. Like this is actually <laughs> for me. And that's, yeah. and that's how I've kind of swapped it with my stuff where it's just like, I'm going to do what fuels me because mm-hmm. this is my hobby. And so with my nine to f- or with my, yeah, my five to nine, do something and chase something that actually makes you feel good because you're already spending the first half doing something that you're not right. wanting to do. So, right. and I mean, it, we see how it leaves you feeling like when you can't be doing your hobbies and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I also think the thing with rejection and criticism and, you know, judgment and all of that stuff. I think it holds a little bit of, I think not more weight, but just different weight when it comes to like art and online stuff, because all of that is subjective. Art Mm. is subjective. So someone telling you that you don't do whatever good enough is like, sure, maybe not, but also there's no rule book. There's no play, but like it is this is how I feel. This is how I express this kind of art and there's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes we do as creatives and people who make art and do stuff in a creative space, it's really difficult to get hung up in that stuff because you're like, you're right. I'm not good enough at vlogging or whatever, Mm -hmm. but like how to vlog, right. Pick up a camera and fucking record. Like that's how you do it. Right. Other than that, it's, all just choices that you're making Mm -hmm. so when you do get comments or whatever you read something and they're like oh my god ryan's so bad at this why bad to you Mm -hmm. bad to you and that's fair and fine and your opinion about that is valid right but that doesn't make me bad at the thing Mm -hmm. you think it's bad Mm -hmm. and these other bitches are eating it up Mm -hmm. so you tell them it's bad Mm mm-hmm Right. You can't because they think it's good Mm -hmm. because it's subjective. Because I feel like this is part of it a little bit. Like putting your stuff out there too, knowing that people are going to talk shit about it. That's another part of the battle. Just knowing that you're going to be seen. The fear of being seen. Oh my God. Mm. Perception, baby. Don't do it. (laughs) Don't perceive me. Except I can't say that because I post myself online. Yeah. And I know. And I knew 
that there was going to be people that hated me or didn't like what I did. It was going to talk shit and all this stuff. And it's fine. I'm fine with it. But I can't, if you do that, you can't let that determine what you are and what you're not going to do. Yeah. I completely agree. Because if not, it's going to get in the way. And there's already so many things that get in the way. So the least, the least that you could do is believe in yourself and believe in your dream. And you know what? If they're talking, if they're making, if someone's making fun of you for like chasing your dream, I'd be like, at least I'm trying. And you, let me just tell you this right now. (laughs) And I'm going to talk straight to the camera. Oh my gosh. Where's my camera? Is it this one? Correct. Okay. If you are in someone else's comments or writing your think pieces about whatever it is you have your opinion about and they're chasing their dreams and you hate the way they do it, go find a dream and chase that. Because to tear someone's dream down, you know, life. Your dog is hungry. Feed it. It just, me holding the mic for dear life. No, right. (laughs) I'm trying. I'm doing my best. And I think that we shouldn't like Make fun of or judge each other for trying. Like, because we do that to ourselves. We are literally like, oh, they're going to think this. They're going to think that. You guys, we don't have, we don't have a lot of time. We don't have much time. Like, stop. Tomorrow is not promised and you're busy thinking about what other people are thinking of you or you're thinking about what other people are doing. Oh, that was for me because you know what? You're so right. I just got to wake up and chase it every day. (laughs) You do because... You might not wake up tomorrow yeah. or something crazy could happen to you and then you might not have the option to chase your dream. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you might as well do it now. So with that, hater or not, if you see your friends posting online or if you see a creator that you love posting and you like the stuff, like it, engage with it. Like that is free and that is something you can do to directly help your friend, your family, an artist you like, whatever the situation is, like, The thing about social media is that that is free. Mm -hmm. And even though, you know, obviously it costs money to make the thing or whatever, it costs you nothing to like it or share it or whatever, Mm -hmm. comment and all that stuff. And all of that is just as important as you like buying something they're selling or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. And it's for free. There's a bunch of people chasing their dreams. So like if you see someone chasing their dream, hitting a like, hitting a share. And like your friend who was trying to get his grant, he was like posting on the internet, please with this. Of course, we're entering raffles, supporting him, trying to help these creators because we know how tough it is. Mm -hmm. Support your friends. Like do whatever you can that you know is going to just boost them. There is no dream that's too small or too silly to not chase after. This episode is for all the bitches chasing their dreams. Like, we love you and we see you and we're rooting for you. If you guys are currently chasing a dream right now, please go in the comments and let us know what you are chasing after and working towards because we want to celebrate you and support you. And I bet you if you drop some links, I will probably go shop and look and watch and like. Literally. We we are you. We are in in the thick of it, like we've talked about. Like we are not at the point where we want to be just yet, but we are trying to enjoy every step of the way, and that's why we're here together. We're here doing it with this team, and we uh, we get you some friends that will support you and mm-hmm. do your shenanigans and dance around in your living room with you because that's what we need. We have to have our woo girl moment before yes. we go because. We also we like must. to celebrate everything big and small, traditional and non-traditional. Today's Woo Girl moment is from Nancy. Nancy says, my Woo Girl moment is that I started my master's degree in special ed this week. Having ce- cerebral palsy myself and teaching special education for the past two years, I'm excited to see what this degree will teach me to be better support to my students. Woo! Come on, Nancy. Yeah. Come on. Nancy. My favorite Nancy is Nancy Drew. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Oh, Miss Nancy Drew. No, that's incredible, Nancy. And I mean, obviously, you'll be able to like just connect with your students so much more. And it's just, uh, we need more teachers, please. We don't need any more singers and dancers. We need teachers. Yeah, literally. No more content creators. We need plumbers. <laughs> <laughs> trained (laughs) please we need help us help us if you want to be a part of the conversation and get your woo girl moment celebrated you can comment down below on this youtube video hit us up in the dms on instagram and you can also submit in the google form link that we have in the description below thank you guys so much for watching and uh keep chasing your dreams we'll see you next week Bye. bye Thank you.
Thank you.